Um, you know, that's something that, you know, I, I try to explain to everybody, like, there's a difference. Um, you have to know and train the dog when it's time to turn it on and when it's time to turn it off. Now, I'm not saying everybody, you know, you see this and, hey, man, I got a pit bull or I got a bully. Let's go out to the woods. Let's go do some hunting. It, it's not like that, and it's not at all. Um, a lot of time, a lot of training, a lot of patience, like anything and everything else you do, um, it, it takes a lot of time. It's not something that you can just do overnight. But this is the same dog in all the pictures with the coons that you see now. Um, so I just thought I'd go ahead and show everybody that so they didn't think that it was just a dog that was on a sort of speak of a killing spree, I guess, or that turned vicious or anything of the sort. Another photo of baby girl. Um, she she was uh, a different a different type of dog completely, man. Um, as you can see in the picture, she's got a little baby rubber ducky that she carried with her everywhere. Um, you know, and it's when when you get a dog that can do the things that she was trained to do, but still come home and still be that lovable, caring, affectionate dog she was before she hit the woods. Um, and that's what she was, man. She was one of a kind, um, completely. Um, you know, and not every dog can be trained and taught to do them sort of things. Um, it takes a lot of time, a lot of experience, um, know your dog inside and out. I mean, completely, 100%. You have to know everything about your dog. You have to watch certain signs, certain body language. Uh, you just have to always, 100% of the time, watch your dog. Um, and that's just with any responsible dog owner or breeder or whatever. I still watch, <clears throat> excuse me, I still watch every single one of my dogs. Um, I know they won't harm anybody, but still, I never stop watching them, ever. I keep an eye on them um, when they're all out with people here. I keep an eye on them when they're all out with just me here. I watch everything all the time. If a dog throws a certain body language or anything, I know pretty much what's going to come um, just by the body language of the dog. I know if it's going to be an aggressive reaction. I know if it's going to be a playful reaction. And with a lot of these dogs, the Pit Bulls, the Staffordshire, the Rottweilers, the Dobermans, uh, the American Bullies, so on and so forth, a lot of the bull breeds play rough. And a lot of times it will sound like they're going to fight or something bad is going to happen and not all the time is that the case um these dogs play rough that's just just part of the breed they're a rough dog um they play rough um i have four boys four boys i mean these boys play rough they wrestle they fight they do everything that boys do i mean it's just they're, they're rough houses, man. They're rough. Uh, they like to rough around, like to play, like to play rough. The bull breed and uh, a lot of other breeds are the same way. Now, by playing rough, it can lead into something, but that's why you have to be there to correct it. You have to be there to stop it before it escalates to that certain point. Here's an older picture of... Uh, Hooch is to the left. This is Nina as a young pup. I got her from uh, Marlon Calvert, a bully breeder that I, he doesn't breed bullies anymore, but at the time he did. Um, and this big, huge female here is uh, Remy. She was an XL. 
Ah, uh, she was, if I'm not mistaken, I think she was a year old here in this picture. Um, at one point in time, I had one of the biggest XL females around our area or in the Midwest. By the time she was done growing and maturing, she was 125 pounds, 28 inches at the withers. She was heavy gray line, bred. I mean, she was just an all-around brute. Um, this is a young photo of Nina. I'll see if I can't find a, a little older photo of her. But I actually bred Hooch to Nina. Nina is off of Champion Osito times Champion Bonnie. And by breeding Hooch to her, that's how I produced uh, Princess, the black female. This here is actually uh, an older photo of Nina after being bred to Hooch and producing Princess there. Um, Princess was a very extreme female. She was more extreme than her father. Um, more, you know, well, more well uh, put together, I guess. Straight fronts, tight feet. I mean, she was an all-around extreme brute female. This female here was named Storm. We actually produced her off of uh, Hooch times Tia. Now, Tia was off of Sloan's Forrest Gump times American Legends Ninjitty. Um produce this little female here I actually ended up picking up Tia I had a 30 foot camper uh, pole behind camper for sale at one point um, when I was starting to get into the bull breed and a guy approached me and said that he had a nice female pup and uh, $500 cash so I took the camper down checked out the female picked her up um, turned out to be a real nice female and then uh, bred her to Hooch produced Storm turned around and bred her to Extreme Champion Marvelous uh, we bred Tia to Extreme Champion Marvelous and produced Karma now Karma was a very extreme female um, for you, those that don't know who Extreme Champion Marvelous is I'll see if I can't find a picture to kind of show you this here is who Extreme Champion Marvelous was at the time. We bred Extreme Champion Marvelous to Tia, produced Karma. When Karma was of age and ready to be bred, I bred her to Hooch. Um, ended up having major complications with that litter. Uh, Karma didn't show no signs of labor. No panting, no contractions. The only reason I knew that she was in labor is because I seen her water had broken. Rushed her in for an emergency C-section. Had 15 puppies total. Three were stillborn. 12 came out alive. Um, a great day. So I thought until I brought her home. On the way home, she was alert, she was awake, she was trying to tend to the puppies on the way home, got her home, set her up, introduced every puppy to her. I had to run to go get uh, one of my sons from school that was literally eight blocks down the road. I no more left the house and came back at probably all together after I introduced the puppies to her and everything, um, I came inside, washed my face. You know, I was still up from the night before. Was running on no sleep, tired. So by the time I walked in the house, washed up, um, got ready to get my son from school, come back, it was probably about an hour. An hour total time that I was away from her. I came back to show my son. We walked in the garage and uh, Karma was laying in front of the kennel door. She she hemorrhaged and uh, bled to death while I was gone. Another 
horrible experience on my path of doing and breeding dogs. Um, one of the worst things I think I've had to deal with when I was first coming into this. Um, didn't have time to really grieve or wrap my head around it all. Um, had 12 other puppies that I had to take care of. Within two weeks, I lost all 12 puppies. They didn't get the first feeding off the mother. Um, they didn't get the colostrum that they needed. Didn't matter how much I did. Um, and I, trust me, I went to every pet store in town and bought um, formula with colostrum replacement in it and heating lamps and heating pads and was up feeding 12 puppies every two hours and stimulating them and washing them and having them go to the bathroom and still after all that I lost a mother and uh, an entire litter and this is this is what goes into this man nothing is guaranteed this is part of it there's a lot of bad things a lot of these breeders will not tell you will not speak about um you know and it's it's just part of it man me uh you ask me a question i'm gonna tell you the truth and i'm gonna give you an answer I've always been that way, and I imagine I'll be that way until I leave this world. It's there, There's just a lot that comes into this, man, and it's not just financially. This will break you down mentally, physically, emotionally. It will be one of the most extreme roller coaster rides you've ever been on in your life, and I guarantee it. But... You know, nonetheless, um, with all the bad things I've had happen and all the bad experiences and, you know, I've sold puppies on payment plans and got ripped off. I've sold adult dogs and got ripped off. I've had breedings that didn't take. I've had, I've lost mothers. I've lost litters. I've lost half litters. I lost a litter uh, with Nana. I bred Nana to a grand champion axle and ended up losing that entire litter to fading puppy syndrome. Never dealt with that a day in my life. Never even heard of it. Something new. Um, and it just happens with uh, litters. Had another female uh, I bred. She didn't produce milk for six days. No milk was coming out. Bottle feeding puppies. One survived off the litter three days before the puppy turned six weeks of age. I started her on mush. Um, before I knew she was choking on the mush, it was too late. I lost the puppy that I literally hand-fed and took care of for almost six weeks. I've had a lot of people tell me what the things that I've had happen in along my way, along the way of me doing this, they would have stopped doing it. They would have gave up. Um, and there has been, there's been times that I've asked myself, you know, why do I keep doing it? Why do I keep going? And, you know, uh, I love what I do. I love my dogs. I love being able to produce something that nobody else has. I love to watch my dogs mature and grow into what they are um, now. This here is the old man himself, Hooch, at six weeks of age. This is Hooch at eight weeks. Um, ugly duckling is what uh, is what we call him. At three months old, this is Hooch in his first show. Um, this is actually one of the first times I met Dayton Bodine from Illinois Kennels. 
he's actually the one that gave me first time uh, a trophy for the first time. This was Hooch at four months. Um, as you can see, the different development from six weeks to four months. And a lot of times, you know, people will sell their dogs because they hit a lanky stage or an ugly stage and not give the dog time to pop and get through its lanky stage or ugly duckling stage. This here was Hooch at 17 months. I thought at that age he was close to being done growing and uh, maturing and I was sadly mistaken. Hooch was the one that uh, man really got me into the extreme American bully um, along with uh, when I first got Hooch man I seen this dog named Jackpot. And he was so short and wide and compact. But I'm like, man, I hope, I hope the dog I just got is something similar to that. You know, I really, really want that type of look. That's what I'm really going for, you know. And like I stated before, you know, I first coming into this, man, I started with everything you could possibly think of. Um, I had pockets I had an XL female um, you know I was just up in the air and all I knew at the time is I wanted an American bully that's what I wanted was a bully but hooch is what really got me on the path of where I am now um, and a lot of the dogs along the way that I seen you know it really drove me to have that sort of dog, that type of dog, and that look. Um, this picture here is actually one of the one of the last pictures my mother took uh, of me and Hooch. So I figure there's no better way to end this than on this picture. You know, um, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, how I started and where I started, and hopefully this here gives you some sort of insight and some sort of uh, history of how it all began. Um, you know, and I know there's a lot of subscribers that have followed me for quite some time. And there's a lot of new subscribers. And I'll probably, I'll probably catch hell for some of the things that I put in this video. And you guys asked me how it all began and where... You know, I've pretty much been through this all and to where I am now. So I see no reason to leave anything out. As always, I want to give a huge shout out to all the subscribers, new and old, all the likes, shares, comments, followers. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully uh, this gave you guys some some sort of insight um, and hopefully it helps you guys kind of understand me a little more you know my mother was my mother was my biggest fan she was my biggest supporter she was my biggest she was my rock man and she was the most important woman in my life you know my wife is very very important to me um, and after losing my mother you know, I, I've taken the time to sit back and really evaluate life more and uh, learn to take a lot of things into perspective and learn not to take everything for granted. As always, take care. God bless. Stay safe. For everybody asking about the two available puppies I do have, they are a three times hooch. Um, breeding I do have one male and one female available if you want to see them videos uh, make sure you go to the icon click on that you'll check it be able to check out the videos uh, I've got videos I think as long as three years ago I had to kind of let you see you know some other history of 
what we've done here and what we've you know produced and everything I know everybody's waiting to see you know the collaboration between me and Dayton and when that's going to be announced and that will be here shortly as well I promised everybody that I would do something like this and I do apologize the way it was done you know obviously it had to be done on a computer I couldn't find all the old pictures I haven't had time to go to my uh mother and father's house and go through the albums uh, a, a big huge part of me is not ready to do that yet so uh, I went ahead and just did it on, on the computer for right now but again I do thank every one of you guys you know I do appreciate it and again God bless y'all